And we want to let all the people that have lost loved ones on the Indianapolis know they have not been forgotten. And we want to go one step further. We want to tell the, the United States and the rest of you people here that we also want to remember the men that gave their lives while serving on board a combat vessel during World War II. The Indianapolis people have been tremendous in supporting us and getting this beautiful monument built. And for that, the survivors will be eternally grateful. On Sunday, May 18th, you'll have an opportunity to hear from the city's only living survivor of the USS Indianapolis sinking, James O'Donnell. It was on July 30th of 1945 that the USS Indianapolis was attacked by two Japanese torpedoes. Nearly 900 men died in that attack. O'Donnell survived five days in shark-infested waters. O'Donnell's presentation will be Sunday, May 18th, at 2 p.m. at Central Library downtown. It is free and open to the public. Along with O'Donnell, military artist John Gramoziak will be joining the festivities. His lithographs will be available for sale and signing at that occasion. John is with us today on Between the Lines to talk about the USS Indianapolis and about this memorial that we're at here downtown, a memorial that was dedicated uh, a couple of years ago in 1995, dedicated to the USS Indianapolis. John, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me here. John, first of all, for those who don't know, tell us about the mission and the role of the USS Indianapolis. The USS Indianapolis was a heavy cruiser, CA-35. It was also a treaty cruiser, which means it had restrictions on the weight of the ship. And this is a deterrent when it was torpedoed because the, th the hull of the armor was very thin. The Indianapolis won 10 battle stars during the war. It also served as President Franklin Roosevelt's ship of state. And unfortunately, on July 30th, it was torpedoed after uh, dropping the components for both atomic bombs off of Tinian Island. Mm -hmm. What were the expectations of such an attack on that day? I mean, the war was so close to its conclusion. Was there an expectation of danger? Actually, in the military, you always have to be on alert. It's, it's a job of the captain to be on constant alert for any possible attack. We were nearing the end of the war. But uh, there's always a possibility something can happen, and, uh, and, and in the case you had, you're supposed to zigzag your ship, of course that's up to the discretion of the captain. Mm -hmm. and the moon wasn't out, so he told the helmsman, well, you know, if the moon comes out, you know, we can zigzag. So that, that was the unfortunate thing that happened there. You have devoted much of your career to military art, and specifically the USS Indianapolis. Tell about some of your lithographs related to the ship. Well, five years ago I answered a call. They needed to raise a quarter million dollars to help pay off this memorial. Little did I know I'd be spending the next five years of my life almost totally absorbed in building this memorial. Uh, I came here by way of Niagara Falls, New York. I've made many friends here, and this is home now. And, and uh, I have told a story on canvas. And my work was used to help raise funds for the memorial. We raised quite a bit of money to sell my work. Mm -hmm. I also am a spokesman for the organization. I make many tours with Jim O'Donnell around the city. We talk about the incident. We go to the schools to keep the message going to our youth. How many lithographs have you made? Uh, I've made uh, 1,100 of each, uh, uh, well, a ship, the rescue attempt, and more recently I painted the memorial itself. Mm -hmm. Hopefully this is going into a postage stamp. Oh, really? Yes. That sounds interesting. How will yeah. this work? Well, it's a lot of politics. We're working on it right now, and it looks pretty good right now. Uh -huh. Also, I know you're working on efforts to have a day proclaimed uh, as a, uh, an anniversary day, a state day of observance. Yes, uh, last week I spoke to the Indiana House and Senate, and we had a proposal that was accepted by both. It will be signed by the governor shortly to make a special day in honor of the ship on an annual basis, which we're very proud of. Again, John Kronosiak and James O'Donnell will be presenting at Central Library on Sunday, May 18th at 2 p.m. It is free and open to the public. John, give us a taste of what people will experience that day. Well, you get a chance to meet a real national hero. He won't say this, but he is. And meet a guy who is a combat artist and talk about the war and whatever else they like to talk about. And uh, I think they'll enjoy themselves. It is free and it's quite an experience, believe me. And your works will be available, correct? Yes, my works will be available. We're raising money for, we have a reunion at the Weston Hotel coming up in July. The survivors will be here and we're trying to raise some money. So please come. What about this memorial here that we're standing in front of? Uh, first of all, are people in Indianapolis, at least, greatly aware of this location? Well, I'll tell you, surprisingly enough, a lot of people don't know about the memorial here. It's the eighth military memorial in the United States. There's only 27 nationally total um, memorials. This is the eighth military one and the last one built so far. Mm -hmm. 
And it is a big piece of history. So I like to see our, our folks learn the story, and that's what we're here for. And it's a beautiful site. We do encourage people to come by. It's located off Senate Avenue and St. Clair Street in downtown Indianapolis. And uh, John Gramuziak, thank you for joining us on Between the Lines. Again, the program with John and James O'Donnell will be Sunday, May 18th from 2 to 4 p.m. at Central Library downtown. Again, it's free and open to the public.